You're listening to DraftKings Network. Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Levitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. If that hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. Billy, where are you with the Marlins right now? What is your state of uh, fear, anxiety, Big day. Uh, None. hope, optimism? I'm optimistic today because nothing's happened yet. How are the Phillies against left-handers? What are you expecting from Luzardo? Uh, you uh, do you fear Bryce Harper? Where no. are you with do it? I fear Bryce Harper? Why would I fear Bryce Harper? What well, is he going to do? He hit two ninety this year. Who do you fear? <laughs> Wait, he's no like three, which is like three forty. Compared to like not 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 for power, adjusting. he didn't hit for a lot of power. But uh, out a lot. I'm talking about lefties. Oh, how is. how are the Phillies against left-handed pitching? Because uh, I would assume that Lazardo could shut down anybody, but that lineup is formidable. I'm not worried about them. I'm already looking past them to the Braves. If we're going to be perfectly wow. honest, with you. yeah, <laughs> confident. Yeah. yeah. Well, Greg Cody, this is typical quintessential Greg Cody. He arrives at the baseball playoffs and immediately wants to change the rules. Doesn't think it's fair that all three games, if there are three games, have to be played in Philadelphia. Oh, totally unfair. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's crazy. It, it, it should not, that should not exist in any sport where if you have at least a three game series, right. the uh, underdog should get at least, it should get, not at least, the underdog should get one of those. So, three how games. do they do it? Exactly it right. One, that's one, the one. Question. How do you do it? I, you know, that's... Philly uh, that's to about, Miami, back to Philly, three consecutive nights. <laughs> that's a good question. That, yeah, yeah. That, that is the question. <laughs> yeah. That's why they can't do that. They added playoff teams. It's what neuters oh, your... they certainly uh, they, could no, do no, it. No, no. They, they certainly could do but it. But how should they? Change the schedule, the days off, fly back and forth for a best of three? Uh, yeah, elongate the series by one or two. How make, about, it, make it a month long. How about I, I think game three should be a home game for the road team. You get what I'm saying? For That's the Marlins. That's impossible. If you get to a third game, that if you can't close the, the team out sense. at Wait home, what? you have to do it in Miami. You think game, game three. Three has to be... What, I'm just trying what? to help Greg I out. Think, <laughs> I think game three... I, 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 well, I got confused by <laughs> that. Me out. It should be a home, take, a home game for the road team. That's what he said. Does that mean that... Yeah. The Marlins bat last in Philadelphia, or does that mean that I'm still they go to Miami? I'm still working this All out. Right, go work it out in the penalty box. Uh, oh, I deserve it. I deserve oh, no. it. I'm not even going to fight you on it. I, I have mean. a suggestion. I do, too. Three-game series. First, They're all going to be in Philly. I'm with you. If you're doing them three days back-to-back, -back, you don't want to travel. Game two, yep. Marlins are home, and the yep. stadium's empty. They had what? a better record. So normally? They had a <laughs> no, I'm saying the Marlins are in oh, Philly man. for game two. I'll have but you the guys stadium know. is empty. I'll have you guys know, you you bunch of chuckleheads over here, that this is the hottest ticket of this round. The get-in price is one hundred ninety-nine dollars. There's other teams that the get-in price is seven dollars. And it's eight right p.m. Now. game, the prime slot. Mm -hmm. I saw the Marlins play the Phillies a few months ago, and yeah. they, I would say it was like 70, 30 Phillies fans. So I don't even know if you won a home game. I hate when that's said. People always think it's it's not. 70-30. It feels like that because it's loud when the Phillies score. It's probably 50-50. The Marlins won, and it was louder every time the Phillies <laughs> scored. Yeah. Okay, I've been struck by an epiphany. Here's what happens. In a three-game series, a best-of-three series, instead of having all three games in one city, which is patently unfair, you elongate the series by one or two games. You give One or two games or days? One days. So best-of-four. No, no, by, by one or two days, not games. It's still a best-of-three. You give... The underdog manager, Skip Schumacher, you give him the choice Magic of whether he wants to play the first or the second game at home. Okay, That's you've got him happens. flying all over the place. I, I so will... the team, the less the less seated team, ha gets the advantage to choose. Yeah, because they only get one game of the three. One of the things that makes that the worst take you've had since you said last week that Messi should play only for Miami and never for anybody else, including his home country, which he got into a World Cup qualifying game with a penalty kick. Right. One of the reasons this is a terrible take is because the Phillies' reward for being better over a 162-game season than the Marlins is this advantage. 
the Marlins, under pr- uh, previous playoff scenarios, would never be in the playoffs with a team six or seven games over 500 if they not had not expanded the playoffs to get these couple of extra days in before the playoffs really start. And because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and Chris Cody is capable of bad opinions just like his father, you can't make the ballpark empty, not just because it's a $199 ticket, the reward for having a successful season for your business is that you get the gate from that game where you have a bustling fan base trying to get tickets. Gates, mate. Okay. Well, I can't do anything with that. I've I've been checkmated. There's a big flaw in your argument, Dan. Yeah. Your argument is that the advantage earned over 162 games should be complete an unequivocal and 100% advantage. You get all the home games. My, my thought is that, yeah, the Phillies have earned an advantage, and that advantage is to have two out of three games at home. Okay, but the entire formula is a contrivance made to just allow the Marlins to play meaningful games in August and September that we're all paying attention to because you've added so many wild cards well, hold on, to Hold it. on a second. They also weren't the last wild card team. They would have made right. the playoffs in a previous incarnation of the rules as well. Yes, and but, the team that but, they're playing this year was a six seed that won the World Series but last year. Five, the World five Series. and six haven't been in the playoffs before. They're just inventing playoff spots for teams, and the punishment is that, look, we don't want the season to go into November. We we want the 162 game season to end in October. We can't keep adding days and teams. But what are we doing here? Because we celebrated the Heat for making the finals as an eight seed, and they were a play-in team. They wouldn't have made the playoff, or they could have been eliminated from the playoffs. They if they were in baseball, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. Half of their playoff appearances over the years are as lower seeds. They wouldn't have made the playoffs. What so. we're doing is objecting to Greg Cody arriving at the new playoff format <laughs> and changing the rules yeah. here That's in bad. order to favor his team. No, in order to give my team, our team, Miami's team, a reasonable earned chance. Oh, they, they, have a chance. they made the playoffs too. Right. They may win this series. They beat they won the season series seven to six. Phillies fans are scared. I'm just gonna yeah, say they it right are. now. They Phillies should fans be. are scared of the Marlins right now. Yep. You don't want that division opponent. Nope. If you're the higher seeded team, all the pressure on the Phillies right here. Yep. What Philly fans are feeling Sal. is uh that baseball can happen to them. That a, a damn right a, that happened to anyone. That, Dan. A, that, yeah. we'll, we'll play this anywhere. <laughs> the the we'll Royals play this on Biscayne Boulevard if we have to. Yeah, the Royals can win a why? best of three series right why now. Why don't you respect them. this Marlins team? Yeah, that's like, also why? a little unfair. The Marlins this <laughs> month have been one of the hottest teams in baseball, and they were only a few games worse in the entire year than the Phillies, and outplayed them head to head. So this is look. If the Marlins win the series, it's not baseball happening. It's the team that over 162 was a little bit worse beating the other. Why team. don't you give me the betting odds on this series? Because I would think that the Phillies. Uh, Tonight and the rest of the series are pretty big favorites. Slight uh, favorites, I think. Also, I America's no, pretty big. morons. So, like, what are we oh, betting true. on? Too They've big. been good against Zach Wheeler, too, right? I would, I'd bet the Marlins just because it's value and because I expect baseball now to happen. On. And I don't think it's a lack of respect for the Marlins to say the Phillies are better than they are. Like, it's not, I'm not indicting the Marlins. The Marlins earned their way into the playoffs. The Marlins surprised me. The Marlins overachieved. This season is a, is a success right now, no matter what happens from here. What is the proper amount of respect and how it is? how is it that you think I'm disrespecting the Marlins by saying that I think the Phillies are better and that it doesn't mean anything that the Phillies are better. Phillies are minus 190 mm. according to draft. That's not a small favorite. Mm. If if the Marlins had their two best starting pitchers available, I would agree with you. Well, that's the other thing. They're broken. Right. That's They're going into this series. It would be, uh, look, man, baseball produces upsets all the time. So I'm not even going to say it would be that surprising if the Marlins won. But my guess is that there aren't a lot of odds in these playoffs that are that much bigger than that one because they're not they're not a they're there are a few games over 500 they because they won so many one run games Billy and their bullpen is good even though you don't like it eh, when they want to be it's our strength oh, it's inconsistent no. it is the strength of this team right now especially with Sandy out the bullpen it's I know I'm with Billy it's scary to think about but it is I like their bullpen. They have so many fresh arms that are hard to hit out of their bullpen. But trying to win a bullpen series without a number one starter? Are we going to do an opener for game three? I mean, Jesus Lazardo would be a number one on some teams. Yeah, that's true. But, the, okay, so at the worst, they're missing two of their three best starters. But I'm just yeah. saying, the, the situation we find ourselves in, who's starting that third game? Edward Cabrera? It is. 
Yeah. <laughs> the Phillies. Johnny Cueto. Cueto? Oh, Cueto. God. Stu Gatz. No, 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 not Cueto. Not Cueto. <laughs> not Cueto. Uh, the Phillies are Never the, Cueto? The, Never Cueto. No. Okay. The, the Phillies are the biggest favorite yes. in, in the playoffs. They are. So yeah. now, now the money is telling you the same thing that I just told you. The, the money being disrespectful? Because the money is telling you. People are putting their money on, no, the Phillies are the biggest favorite in the wild card round. I think that really probably has to do with Ayuri Perez and Sandy Alcantara being out. So a lot of people look at the Marlins who don't watch them all season long and see, oh, their two best pitchers are out. Let me throw all the money on the other team without actually knowing what this team has done over the last month without them. I don't believe that that's how gambling odds are made. I don't. I don't believe on the public money. On right? uh, I don't believe. Yeah, that, but Vegas sets a line. I, they, right. I believe that this is uh, informed, and while there is popular money that will come on the ignorance of just bet against the Marlins because they're not supposed to be there. Once you've arrived at minus one ninety with the money, it is at least in part because people. Uh, doing the analysis on these things that are smarter than us, right? Because Stugatz is just calling Lucy for picks after she gets hot. Mm -hmm. Um, People who are smarter than us are putting those odds uh, not just where the, uh, the, the betting public is ignorant, but where the smart people are also on the money. Eh. Yeah, uh, the money Um, is agreeing with me. The money is saying, isn't it ridiculous that one team has all three (laughs) home games? That's what the money's saying. The money is on a soapbox agreeing with me. Mm -hmm. Lucy, how uncomfortable are you right now wearing that neck brace? I have terrible posture, so I hope this is going to be good for me. But it is really not comfortable. (laughs) I can't look up at the screen. I have to. That's the look, though. When it. you lean back, that's what that, yeah. that's where it the best look count, is, right so. there. I wouldn't. Don't say that, Billy. You it do, counts. Do it for nothing. It doesn't <laughs> it count. Counts. So. <laughs> it absolutely counts, or I will walk out right now and not come back. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, uh, Billy also said, "I came in one day. We were all supposed to do uh, Johnny Depp costumes. Yeah, December. Yeah, that's I, a whole. That's a group thing, Dan. You did that on right. your own. I did it count. in December. Nobody else did it. And well, no, Billy says it. Do- it didn't because it was it was a December pageant that you're supposed to be a part of, in which we were all going to compete, and fans were going to vote on who you the best rogue. Johnny Depp was. Yeah. and then that the winner of the December pageant lose." lost the punishment it was going to be removed and you went rogue and just did it on your own so because no one else count. did theirs well, we could use photographs for all four we didn't have to do it the same day it's a pageant <laughs> he's right <laughs> hey it's mike ryan I want to talk to you about miller light what's your favorite place to watch a game is it at the stadium at a sports bar in your living room with your pals I'm sure all are great, so long as you have that beautiful white can of ice-cold Miller Lite by your side. At just 96 calories a can, Miller Lite is the only light beer you'll want to celebrate the great game of football with all season long. Whether you're at that stadium, whether you're in that living room, whether you're in that bar, please, just make sure Miller Lite is by your side. Crack it open. Crack it open right at kickoff. Time it out. It's amazing. 96 calories. That's right, folks. 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce serving. Smooth taste. Crisp, clean finish. You know it. You know it. I tell you every week, you get the taste you crave without the calories. This season, crack open a light beer that hits your taste buds so hard, you feel it in your heart. Make it Miller time all season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Stu Gatz here for my friends over at Simply Safe. Well, it's official. Fall is here. If you're like me, you're settling back into busier routines. I'll have a lot of traveling again this year for my daughter's lacrosse games. Northwestern, going to go back to back. Let's do it. But that's why I recommend Simply Safe Home Security and their revolutionary home monitoring innovation 24 7 live guard protection. It's designed to help stop crime in real time. Now, if an intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera, warning them that the police are on their way. How about that? I'll scare the hell out of them. The new smart alarm indoor camera is also the only indoor security camera that can trigger the alarm and instantly deter intruders with a built-in siren. I've had it in my home for years now. Swear by it. Love it. For a limited time, get 20% off your new system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Visit simplysafe.com slash DLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Don Libertard. Punctuate this segment with what is your strike three call. Well, strike one would be 
Strike! And then you stand up and you give a good point to the right. Stugats. That's the same for strike two. Okay. But strike three, you get down low. You got your hands behind the catcher. All right? The right arm goes up into the air. Yeah! And then you finish it with the punch. Oh the right arm <laughs> flings way up into the air. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I wish I could see that. (laughs) It's terrible. The audio is great. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. He's very busy, so we will not keep him very long. But Skip Schumacher finds himself in a position I'm not totally sure he thought he'd find himself in before this season. Rare for this amount of success this fast. Uh, Skip Schumacher with us now. Thank you, Skip, for joining us. But let me ask you your level of surprise here. I tell you when you take the job, the percentage of chance that you believe you'll make the playoffs at the end of this season is blank. You would have told me what? I thought it was uh, we were going to make the playoffs only because um, of our rotation and our pitching staff. And uh, I just thought that we were going to have a chance in every single game. Um, Last year, the one-run games that were lost uh, were, you know, I think we lost 40 of them. So if you just cut those in half, I thought we had a really good chance. And when we added uh, Arias, I think that was the game changer for us. And uh, once we added uh, a real bat at the top of the order to get on for a healthy Solaire, and with the pitching staff that could keep us in every single game, I really thought we had a, a really good shot. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't think we were in a development type of mode, our team. I thought we were in a win now type of mode. Um, I know a lot of the critics did not think that. Um, but I, I'm, I think uh, I, I thought we had a really good shot once I took the job. So that's the interesting part, I guess, about the season and how you and Kim were able to adapt and change the roster because you were in full belief of the pitching staff. And Sandy obviously had a bit of a down year compared to winning the Cy Young last year. There was injuries in the rotation. And then towards the end of the year, you had a bullpen game every you know fifth game. So it, it's just, I guess, a credit to you and Kim and how you were able to do it. So how surprising are you that you guys were able to hold on? Well, it's it's a credit to our staff for sure. Um, d- definitely not just me. Uh, you know, Mel Stoudemire and um, Beef, our bullpen uh, coach, was you know really good uh, as as far as you know getting the bullpen right. Uh, we made made some changes obviously throughout the year on you know kind of late inning leverage um, bullpen matchups. But yeah, for the most part, um, you know our our bullpen or our our rotation was decimated the last two months, and we had to be creative of getting through games. Um, and our credit to our bullpen, it was whatever you needed at any time. And we had two openers a week uh, for the last probably six weeks when Sandy went down, and that was not easy. It was taxing on our bullpen. Uh, We had a 16-game stretch uh, where we had limited starters, so it was really challenging. There's no doubt about it. Um, But guys stepped up at the right time. Um, It tested our depth in the minor leagues, and I think that's why you know we are where we are right now because of, of the guys that stepped up. Tell me more about beef. <laughs> Please. Uh, beef uh, is an incredible uh, cepeda. Yeah, he's. I know where you go with that. Uh, he's a really good pitching coach. Good family man. Awesome. But why beef? So I'll leave it at that. But why? But why? Okay. Why? Why? You have another good coach. Family man. You have another coach named Pipe. What? <laughs> why? Why Pipe? Uh, they're they're just really good nicknames. Uh, I'll give it. I'll give okay, it, I'll give it, I, I feel like we've cornered them. No, the no, story. I, no, I, I feel mean. like we've cornered the manager. Not only are they good nicknames, they're inappropriate nicknames. And we now have Skip cornered. He doesn't want. Look at him. That is real shame on his face before an important uh, game tonight. Uh, I'll I'll switch over to another uh, question. Who calls you in your life, Jared? Uh, only my mom. Yeah. So when I was a, uh, I was a kid, uh, I had four Jareds on my baseball on my t-ball team, and uh, which is kind of crazy. And my dad didn't love the name Jared anyway for whatever reason. Um, and so I could do a lot of things athletically, but I couldn't skip. And um, and so my dad thought that would be funny, and he nicknamed me Skip. And uh, here I am, and uh, Skip. You know, forty years later. And my my mom my mom calls me uh, Jared or Skippy, uh, which was off awful in high school. She actually put 
Skippy as a license plate on my car uh, when I was 16. That's it's great. absolutely brutal driving into high school for just two or three years of driving. That's why you That's overcompensated awesome. by getting jacked, right? You got all you got all physically fit because you're like, I got Skippy as a license plate. Skippy, Skippy with what? Well, yeah, unbelievable. What can you tell me about the relationship with your parents that makes it so your dad doesn't like your name? Like, wasn't he a part of the decision making process? Uh, I mean, I, my wife had a, uh, she got to name my son, uh, and you know, I, I loved it. Thank God. And Brody. So I, I, it, it pretty much, my, my dad let my mom, uh, name me. And, uh, I don't, I think, uh, there wasn't much argument. It's just, you know, whatever made her happy and, but he was going to change it eventually and did. Skippy, if I may, um, <laughs> Skippy. when you all made the deals for Berger and Josh Bell, it seemed it's an incredible coming. outfit. I think you, very, you know what? Yeah. Guess who he is? Listen, every Jolly. time, every time the Marlins make the playoffs, I dress like Harry Styles. It's just a long-standing right. tradition down mm-hmm. here. So congrats! You on did that. it in 03, huh? Yeah, yeah I did. At ninety seven, when yeah. he was nine. before he was born. I'm sweating like a pig here, Skippy. Um, when you guys uh, acquired Burger and Bell, in all seriousness, it seemed to provide the spark that led to where you are right now. To what degree did those two acquisitions sort of turn things for you? Yeah, it completely tra- uh, transformed our not only our lineup but our cl- our clubhouse. Um, Kim acquired good, really good human beings um, that provided leadership. You asked Jazz, uh, you know, who has impacted him the most this year, and it was Josh Bell uh, or Berger, which is uh, crazy to think about. that They've only been here a couple months now, and those are the guys that have impacted him the most, showing him what work ethic looks like, a routine looks like, um, accountability. Uh, they have been incredible. Josh Bell um has has been playoff has been playoff tested as recently as last year um and in the first hitters meeting he was the one that spoke up and dove in and talked about the pitcher and this is what we should do this is how we should game plan um and he just brought everybody on board with him uh burger his work ethic is a 10 out of 10 he's been injured earlier in his career with two Achilles uh, injuries and um i think he does not take any day in the major leagues for granted and you can tell by the way he shows up that he's ready to go to war um, every single night. Um, and so when you have those two guys come in and that type of mentality, um, it changes the culture of the clubhouse immediately. And uh, and by the way, we get Berger for at least four more years, which is even better uh, for our, our franchise and our organization and somebody you can build around uh, a controllable bat, which, you know, we des- we definitely need it. So Kim, uh, you know, no pun intended, hit a home run on on both of those uh, trades. I ask you the most professional player you've ever seen, and you can only choose one from work ethic and all of the things you're talking about there. You've played for a champion, a lot of big leaguers. I'm assuming you're going to take a teammate of some sort, but give me one name when you think maximum professional. That I've ever played with? Yes. Paul Goldschmidt. Wow. Wow. Goldie. Yeah. 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 I mean, Albert Pujols is obviously it's tough to say one, uh, but um, Albert Pujols is tough to sit to not put right there, too. So I know you said one, but Albert Pujols and and Paul Goldschmidt, I don't know how to, like, take one over the other, honestly, uh, for what they meant to, you know, the teams and franchises. And um, if you could build a franchise around one person that uh, loves base running, loves defense loves hitting loves his teammates all the above it'd be tough not to say paul goldschmidt's not your guy um that's that's how much um you know i was impressed with him last year and albert pujols is at the top of that list as well so it's tough to say one or the other adam wainwright is insane too but you know i'll I'll leave you with albert and, and uh and paul with them far out of the playoff picture, it seemed as if the Mets tried to sabotage your season. Oh, that was that with the was, grounds yeah. crew. That's what you're, we you're, That was yes. as angry as you've yeah. been with an opponent all season, correct? You trying to do what you did with the tarp there? I, you know, it was a mistake on my part because I didn't. I totally didn't even cross my mind that th- there was uh, cameras on during a rain delay, um, and and so I, I just um, I had enough. <laughs> I just had enough. My job is to protect the players and to serve the players and have their best interest. What happened that whole week um, was not – they were protected at all. And, um, 
And I, I just felt like something needed to be said uh, after the three hour rain delay when it was dry um, and nothing was being done. Uh, and so um, MLB did an awesome job, amazing job of trying to get that game in. They really did. The umpire crew, umpiring crew tried to get that game in as much as they could. They knew the ramifications of that game and they were going for it. The grounds crew did not. Um, and that's what I was upset about. Wow. Were you angry when you saw the uh, grounds crew taking a picture in front of the Marlins dugout when <laughs> everything was said and done? And was there talk of a protest? Were you going to file a protest? Uh, there's no talk of a protest. Uh, we were planning on uh, going into New York um, on the off day yesterday if we had to. Um, but no talk of a protest. Um, was I angry about the picture? Uh, it just kind of solidified why I was angry uh, you know, an hour before uh, of having to deal with that crew. I want to ask you two follow-ups there, and I will leave it alone, but an act of active sabotage by the Mets grounds crew, yes or no? No, I don't think so. I think I think they just they forgot to tarp a few days prior to that. That's what got me upset at the beginning. That's why we had a doubleheader. How you forget to tarp when there was a tropical storm coming in. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to me. Oh, I forgot. Um, yeah, uh, but so I don't think it was a, uh, after that. I think it was just a mistake, uh, which, you know, that's that's kind of what um, got me going initially. Another time this season that you were that level of angry. <laughs> um, I would say the oh, there's always, you know, balls and strikes uh, that, you know, you, you just I can't. Just keep watching my uh, my players. Just keep getting. Uh, I can't say the word, but um, screwed. Uh, so I, I think the um, I think the probably in Cincinnati. I was wasn't excited about some 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 calls, but um, n- n- I don't think I've ever been that mad um, at at a grounds crew or a, um, <laughs> a, a a non-umpire. I should say from another team. What'd you say? I mean, come on. I mean, give it up. What did I say? Yeah, I mean, it was, give it up. Just yes. give it up. I mean, Come on. it was enraged. Yeah. It's just fury. You're in the playoffs. Who it's care? fury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I just wasn't. I, I, it was the blame kept getting redirected, and I wanted to know who should be blamed. <laughs> You would just, you would just kept going from place to place. Who will accept my fury? Said, and of course, your fury arrives, and they're like, that guy over there wasn't me. So you never got good answers, correct? Right. And so that he was the head grounds crew guy. And um, and so, yeah, that's that's he, he, he was going to wear it. But you're embarrassed by the idea that you went out there and handled the tarp yourself? You're embarrassed by that, that it was on video? No, I, that part. So I went to UC Santa Barbara. We were tarping the field every single morning to play that night. Hand right? dirt. Practice that day. Um, and there's, there's so much rain. So the, the idea that I didn't know what a tarp, uh, taking off a tarp looked like that was told to me. Uh, didn't uh, I just show them how it looked uh, because I've done it a million times. <laughs> it's uh, a teaching moment. Oh, it's yeah. the, the yeah. monster. Yeah. So okay. don't, don't tell me how to unroll a tarp or tarp a field. Like, An expert, that was right. my job for two years at 7 a.m. before class. Like I, I know how to do this. Um, that, I think the embarrassing part was when I was yelling at the grounds crew um, guy. That, that part was um, – I wish it was underneath in my office or in the tunnel. Uh, I don't regret uh, – the the argument i just regret it being on tv last note here can you articulate for me how it compares to other things that you have felt in your playing career the fulfillment of taking pictures on a field because of how you played the last three weeks of the season going through the brewers and the braves and the dodgers to get what you wanted explain articulate for me your joy and where it is that you got most moved uh, by the accomplishment. I, no joke. I'm getting chills right now thinking about it. Um, from where we were in spring training, losing literally every single game. I know spring training doesn't matter, but, man, we were getting our ass kicked. Uh, that's just the reality. We were, we were getting our butt kicked. We had some WBC guys um, that were away. We had some other guys playing some important innings or, or innings in, in spring training. And to watch them grow, Solaire turning into a real clubhouse leader, Arias turning into another real clubhouse leader, 
watching the growth of Lazardo and Braxton. And um, when guys fell, you know, as far as like, you know, Sandy going down um, and guys stepping up into roles that they were not never used to. Tanner Scott coming in for four out saves time and time again. Nardi coming in in high leverage situations, bases loaded, no outs, no runs. Uh, guys have not gone through this before, and you don't know if you can do it until you're put in that situation. And the belief in our staff that these young guys can do it um, and continue to put them in these situations, knowing that we knew they could do it, they just had to believe it for themselves. Um, it, that goes a long way. But you know, to see Kim out there, um, you know, first GM to first female GM to get into a postseason. Um, our, a lot of our staff that have not been, or a lot of the players that have not been in a postseason, uh, the commute, the fans above our dugout in Pittsburgh that haven't seen uh, a real postseason, um, all of that together, um, you just kind of look up and look around, and um, it, it really was unbelievable. It was surreal, the joy, the happiness on these guys' faces. Um, I'll never forget it. I, you know, I've been in postseasons as a player. But to see those guys, all the work that they put in um, to get to where we get to, um, it, it was one of the best days ever. Thank you and congratulations. And which would it be harder and more inappropriate for you to describe, beef or pipe? <laughs> which from it's got to be pipe? It's got to be pipe, right? Yeah, it's got right? to be, be pipe. Pipe is much easier to to to, uh, to discuss than the beef one. Yes. Wow. Okay. Really? Oh, Very wow. good. We'll upset. leave it a mystery. Yes. It wasn't upset. I <laughs> don't thought. Get him, well, I don't think it's because pipe don't is. Get him, skip. Don't get I don't skip. Let's, Let's, Let's go, skip. Yeah. Let's, Let's go, skip. Let's go, skipper. See you later, skip. All right, All right. Love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Love you too. <laughs> wow, the rare. He loves went us. the other way yeah. that time. Yeah. He initiated. It's weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thursday night football is on, and it's only on Prime. All of your favorite teams, all of your favorite players, and an iconic broadcast team featuring Al Michaels and Kirk Herbstreet. Be sure to check out the incredible matchups all season long. Thursday night football, it's on Prime. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with TNF Tonight, presented by Verizon. Not a Prime member? Not a problem! Simply sign up for a 30-day free trial, and you can cancel at any time. Restrictions apply. See Amazon.com slash Amazon Prime for details. Don Lebatard. Stugatz, if you give him the choice, Stugatz, you can have the very same thing one of two ways. You could get it honestly or you could steal it. He'll always choose stealing it. Stugatz. Well, it's the quicker path. I mean, it's just, you know. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz. There aren't a lot of places where I can say with confidence I have the life experience here that would make something in my wheelhouse confidently. However, working with your father is something that I feel qualified to talk about. And <laughs> Greg Cody and Chris Cody working together on the Greg Cody podcast featuring Greg Cody. With? Mm -hmm. Fine has been a source of great tension. I had to mediate peace with them last week in the garage, both of them very stubborn about things. <laughs> but what, what I recognize in seeing the relationship between Greg and Chris is that Chris will always be Greg's little boy, no matter how adult he is. This was the problem for me on Highly Questionable. My father never thought I was in charge. He was in charge. Mm -hmm. Well, he was. I mean, and Daddy. This yeah. is what... Uh, Daddy of Dadder Day fame yeah. uh, likes. He is in charge of that podcast. And sometimes his son, who's working very hard, wants to go to a Dolphin game, get drunk, and not have to work on his father's podcast. I think we can agree that that podcast, while important to Chris Cody, is not as important, nothing in the world is, as it is to Greg Cody. Greg Cody's podcast is the symbol for his career punctuation it has his name on the title twice yeah I mean. <laughs> it's not greg cody featuring chris cody with it's yeah. greg cody featuring greg cody with. and you can find it wherever it is that you get your podcast and please do <laughs> that kind of thing and you know it <laughs> come on now he's right and you know it. that's the laziest you've ever gone through your hits right there and and billy it's the laziest billy supported it too like that's them just hitting the final notes on wow we're bored with this he's right 
And you know it. Baby Brad. That kind of yeah. thing. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing. All right. <laughs> now, we got a great new podcast out. Jeremy's on it. He's singing show tunes. Hey, yo. What a great story Jeremy tells about when I ask him whether or not he, in the middle of a post-game shower with his high school baseball team, he broke into a show tune. What a wonderful story that was. Wow. It didn't happen. Whoa, spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Yeah, geez. Jeez, huh. way to go. Huh. I mean, it was uh, the premise was there. He could have run yeah. with it. Set it up Said beautifully. You stumbled yeah. with it. Mm. That kind of thing. Good podcast anyway. Great episode. And, and Christopher, by the way, with his tail between his legs, came through for me this week with a little dolphin post-mortem, which I couldn't do because I was on a cruise ship steaming from the Bahamas. And did I bash him as a person? Did I bash him steaming. for missing? No, no but I then, didn't. No, but your father, lo- your, your father loves applying rules to others that don't apply to Damn him. Right He's I the do. boss. He I was mean. rage-filled. Didn't speak to his son for days, and furthermore, polluted last week's show with his rage. Thank you. Because he couldn't bring himself to funny because he was so mad at his son for tailgating, enjoying 70 points, enjoying a 70-point victory. (laughs) Yeah, and not sharing it with my podcast audience. He wanted the exclusive get of his son drunk from the yes, tailgate. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. He deserves it. Calling no. him a raucous bar. Brought him to life. I mean, with I, Dadder Day being chanted in the background. Dadder Day, Dadder Day, Dadder Day. That's what I wanted. Did I get Dadder it? Dadder Day. No. Dadder Day. Dadder Day. Thank you. Speaking of singing, we have more video of Lucy on that interminable airport bus ride, and she wanted to ask Greg Cody's opinion how he would feel in general about having somebody on a bus when you're a weary traveler uh, sing, and this part is important, an original song that will not stop. Lucy has told me that yesterday we played the short version somehow of this annoying bus driver. We have a longer version, and she says it was nonstop for many, many minutes. He never stopped singing. So, Lucy, what context do we need for this? So he sang multiple songs, not just one original song. This was the first song he sang for everyone. And it wasn't like he was like, oh, I think I'm just going to sing today. It was clearly planned out because he had an opening He had a performance. This is the opener. That, that led <laughs> he into got, this song first right set, here. He looked, in the mirror, he looked in the mirror before going on stage in the morning after and prepared for or I'm going to sing to these weary travelers. I've got a performer buried inside of me, and I'm now just a bus driver at the airport that will not stop me from being entertaining. Listen to this. How annoying is this, Chris Cody? Night, I didn't get to sleep at all last night. I got to thinking about you. Night, I could drink a pot of coffee, eat some Oreos, turn on my computer, watch YouTube. Greg Cody, your thoughts? He loves it. You know what? That's the kind of thing that is absolutely delightful for about 30 seconds, and then it falls off a cliff and becomes the most annoying thing you've ever heard of. He sang two more songs after that, by the way. Really? Two more songs. Well, it's part of the first set. I mean. <laughs> everyone, everyone here had the same reaction listening to that, which is that would be Greg Cody as a bus driver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. Whatever... Latent talent I have waiting to come out would come through because I'm not going to let a bus hold me back, Jack. You know, I'm going to do my thing. I would absolutely, I would take requests. 
Uh, you know, I would have a boom box on the seat just to the left of me, right. so it was inconspicuous. So what I respect think, about band? what I respect about this driver is he wasn't taking requests, he wasn't playing the hits, he was singing his own stuff, yeah. and it was pretty good. He Jeremy, didn't mail it in. Jeremy, I mean, you have a professional voice. That was a pretty good voice, right? Seems like someone who clearly was a musical theater performer and wrote a musical about his experiences as a bus driver. There you go. More power to him. Don't be held back, people with talent. You may not have the job to show it. Make it. Do it anyway, despite your job. Sing in an office. Do whatever you got to do. I need to explain to the audience, Lucy has said, please do not sing to me without permission. But I need to explain to the audience listening only on audio without video that Greg Cody's gas station glasses are so cheap and plastic (laughs) that the amount of humidity and fogging that there is because the glasses that are heart shaped are too close to his face looks like. A bare ass of a very small, small child has been uh, sat upon those glasses and left an imprint. Uncomfortable. Weird uh... sentence. (laughs) But it looks like either angel's wings or the imprint of an ass. Those are the. I'll go with the angel's wings. (laughs) It was an oddly specific visual. I mean, (laughs) a small child. Come on now. (laughs) 